Happiness through curiosity on the Ranveer Show. Welcome to TRS Clips. Mm, I feel it's been a few months since we did our last recording from a geopolitics perspective. Do you still feel we're on course for some sort of a uh, an international scale world war? I hope not, but it is a significant possibility for sure, okay. because there are multiple friction points worldwide. We just saw what happened in Taiwan. We already know what's happening in Ukraine. There's a slow war happening. The classic slow war strategy that Russia is employing. There is tension between India and the U.S. right now. Significant friction tensions and a tussle that's going on. There is obviously the India-China border dispute. The Chinese are constantly pro uh, prodding and poking India, and India is not. Uh, giving in. So there's plenty of uh, all these issues. There's also the China-Japan issue. So the Chinese are continuing their so-called peaceful rise, which is not very peaceful. It's a it's the rise of a, of a bully. And then there's the old guard, the US, the Western world, the Western bloc, which is now in visible decline because uh, there's a whole host of problems there. Why there's visible? Visible decline because we are seeing the economy stagnating. We are seeing massive inflation. We are seeing a crisis of leadership in the West. Hmm. The only leadership from was from the US. The other states are essentially satellite states, essentially of the US. And the US clearly has a crisis of leadership right now. Hmm. There are all these issues in the, in the West. The Chinese think it's their time to rise, but their economy is also stagnating. India's economy is rising very rapidly. Let's see how long that continues. I hope it does. So there are all these very interesting scenarios going on at various, various different parts of the globe. What's clear is that this is the, people have been saying it's the Asian dec, uh, Asian century. Some people were saying it's the Chinese century. It could possibly be the Indian century, actually, mm. the way things are going right now. Mm. So it's, it's very interesting times we live in. And there could be, there could be mili military conflict. There are multiple flashpoints. There's always the India-Pakistan flashpoint. The India-China flashpoint is there. The entire border is un undemarcated. We've had issues in the past. We've had uh, clashes in the past. Mm. The Chinese obviously seek to constantly keep India on the back foot, destabilize India. There's a Taiwan issue. The Chinese want to get that island back. It is their stated objective. They want to do it as soon as possible. They are waiting for the right opportunity and so many other issues. So yes, there are plenty of flashpoints and any of those could spark off a war, like like what happened in World War One. One little thing happens, and every the entire continent is mm. under you know under, under in turmoil. So we've kind of uh, let the pot simmer till the tension has reached the brim, and now we're just waiting for something to happen to spark off probably a worldwide conflict. I think we don't want to see a worldwide conflict, but it's a possibility. Mm -hmm. Because see, once a spark is set off, you never know what's going to happen. Once you start a conflict, it can escalate to any level. Now, the trick for India is to not get involved in any conflict for the next 10, 20 years. Why? Because our economy is growing really rapidly now. The past two years, because of the global issue, the, the, the pandemic, we had a downturn in the economy. The first quarter of 2022, India's economy grew at 13.6%, which is phenomenal. Now, that is something that may not be sustainable in the long run. But even if India's economy grows at 8% per year, by 27, we're going to be at $5 trillion, the GDP. By 2032 or 2033, we're going to be at $10 trillion. Once India reaches the $10 trillion mark, it's going to be unstoppable. Because... As your economy grows, your hard power power also grows correspondingly. Which is your military force. The military strength. Force. Correct. Okay. The military strength. Because if you have more money to invest in the military, you're going to get stronger. Mm. So as your GDP grows, your military also grows. Once India reaches the $10 trillion mark, nobody will essentially be willing to contemplate messing with India. Mm. So India, the trick for India is to reach that figure, the $10 trillion mark figure, without getting embroiled in any significant military conflict anywhere. It's going to be a tightrope tight rope walk, but uh, let's let's see how that goes, you know. Mm. Uh, I mean, there are other nations that do not want India mm. to reach that stage. There are nations that do not want to, uh, to see India reach even the $5 trillion mark. The Americans don't want that because they've already made a big mistake with China. They aided and abetted the rise of China back in the 1970s, 80s, 90s onwards, and now see what they created. They created a big monster which is now threatening their entire status as a superpower. Mm. They do not want to repeat that mistake with India. So they seek to use India as a counterweight to China, but they do not seek to see India rise too much. Mm. So they help India in certain ways, but they seek to destabilize and hamper India in other ways. And that's what we are witnessing right now. Mm. So that's the tightrope walk that India has to walk. Everybody, I mean, India has plenty of enemies, plenty of adversaries in the subcontinent, in Asia, in the Western world. I mean, India essentially has no allies. 
India is going it alone, but India is capable of going it alone. So that is the tightrope walk that India has to do for the next 10, 15, maximum 20 years. And then we are, we are out free. Thank you for watching this clip. If you want to learn more about this topic, we've curated a playlist just for you. And here's a link to the whole episode.